In this video, Joe Rogan and his guests discuss the possibility of humanity surviving a global extinction due to meteorite impacts. Like, why are we so f***ed up? Like, why is civilization so wacky? Why do we have these, these, these weird structures that no one can really explain? And when you think about the fact that there's so much evidence that we were hit by comets, that we were hit by large objects. Like, I didn't know about that enormous crater that's in um, Antarctica. An international team of researchers discovered a huge impact crater under the ice sheet of Antarctica with the help of two gray satellites. This could be one of the largest meteorite craters on Earth. The structure, which is more than 440 kilometers in size, is hidden under an ice sheet about one and a half kilometers thick. Yeah, there's a big one in in, uh, in Antarctica. I don't know that much about it, but another one that you... Have you heard of Burkel Crater? That's another one? Yes. Yeah, Burkel Crater, like the 20-mile 20, 20 hole in the bottom of the Indian Ocean. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. That's, and when is that supposed to be five, from? So five, that was 5,000 years ago. They dated that. It's something plopped down in the, the Indian Ocean, and it washed up these mega tsunamis on the coast of Madagascar and Western Australia that we can see in satellite images today. These got these like five, 600 foot high chevrons from where the water went miles inland. So you can look this up um, yourself on Google Earth. You just need to type in Fenobosi chevron and there you go. You can clearly see some like wave patterns in the sand. It clearly looks like large flooding has been through that area. And they, they, they found organic material from the seabed in these chevrons and then they date that with carbon-14 dating and they put it right at uh, 5,000 years ago, so, so 2,500 around that time BC. It's just crazy that it's happened so many times. That's like what they we, say. We like to think of history as being this linear thing. We started out as cave people. That's and right. then we branched out from Africa all across the world. <laughs> and that's and the end kept, of it. And kept learning. And here we are today with cell phones. But no, yeah. no, it's we've been, we've been rocked. Like multiple many times, times, many, many times, I, and there's real solid evidence. The Antarctica one, how old do they think that is? I don't recall on that. Mm -hmm. I have to double check that. I'd have to do a Google, Jamie. <laughs> and, yeah. and so researchers have discovered a crater 1.5 kilometers beneath the Antarctica ice crust, <laughs> 482 kilometers okay. in diameter. 482 kilometers yeah. in diameter. Holy shit. What does that Probably dates back to a meteorite impact 250 million years ago. That's wow. A, that's, okay, so that's an old one. That's like an order of magnitude bigger than anything related even with the younger draw. I mean, that's a... It, bigger than the dinosaur one, right? Yeah, that's like it's, a yeah. 99 point whatever percent extinction event. So it's just, that it just keeps happening. Based on crater formation rates determined from Earth's closest celestial partner, the Moon, astrologists have determined that during the last 600 million years, the Earth has been struck by 60 objects of a diameter of 5 kilometers or more. The Earth just, over millions and millions of years and thousands of years that humans have been around, Does. the Earth just keeps getting whacked. The evidence is so <laughs> overwhelming. In, that, in, in, say, going back to the younger, driest period of time, there's evidence, when you say get whacked, more than 30% of all landmass at that time was charred, burned. It, they, they claim that it's more fires than existed in the time of the dinosaurs. Now, I don't know if that, that's an article I read on Science Alert. I don't know if they can truly prove that, but if nothing else, 30% of all landmass existing today was burned and scorched to death at that period of time. That like helps people to wrap their heads around like this. The world was on fire. How do they think people survived? Is there any speculation? It, it, and where did we survive? Like, where was the good spot? I think caves. I, I think a lot of it would have been underground. And I think that's, you might actually, they may have even known. Like, I think there's some evidence to suggest that some of these, like Darren Kuyu in, Tur in, uh, in Turkey, the, in the Cappadocia region. The Darren Kuyu underground city is an ancient multi-leveled underground city in Darren Kuyu district in Turkey. Extending to a depth of approximately 85 meters, it's large enough to have sheltered as many as 2,000 people together with their livestock and food. Region could host tens of thousands of people. There's massive labyrinths all over Egypt at beneath Saqqara. There's miles and miles of tunnels and catacombs. I've been down into a bunch of them. I, and, and even when you look at sites like Gobekli Tepe, there's been some in interpretations of the artwork on that site that seems to indicate a cosmic calendar. Like, they're almost marking that date. We know that the ancients were watching the sky. Like, they were concerned about it. And comet mythology is a fantastic topic for Randall. I talked with him about this quite a bit. The comet, it wasn't seen as a pretty thing in the sky. Like, it was the, the harbinger of doom. Like, comets and we, uh, all those types of things were just seen as really bad things that they were preparing for. But I, I think we survived...
partly because of diversity and being spread out all around the world. There were parts of the world that weren't as badly touched, like Australia, for example. That whole continent wasn't as badly affected as, say, the Northern Hemisphere was from the Younger Dryas. Mm. Thanks for watching, everybody. And if you like it, please don't forget to like and subscribe.